guys doing out here in the shop <clears throat> looking at some uh, injection pumps I got to put together this pump for putting on I got to fly on my lens I got to put together this pump for uh, Spear of Deer Power let me show you some things right now I'm running uh, an A pump on there this is just a generic A pump housing I got I'm gonna got this P pump I want to put on there as you can see it's a little little difference in size but uh, it's really not the outside of the housing that makes a difference. It's what's on the inside. Let me show you. In the A pump, the smaller of the two pumps, you have your pumping element here. This is called a plunger and a barrel. As you can see, this is the pumping element, the plunger. goes in there. And uh, in your P pump, there's quite a bit of difference in size. It's a lot larger and you everything is bigger the plunger moves farther and uh, can move a lot more fuel so therefore we're hoping to get some more fuel by going to the p-pump as you can see I got this pump from a guy had it on 6030 it's a 12 millimeter pump he had suffered some breakage this is what the the plunger looks like from the factory. It's got this bottom piece that uh, the lifter pushes on to make it go up and down. Well, this uh, that had broken off of this one. Here's one of the pieces that broke off, and I had never seen actually that happen before. But it, it broke off, so uh, it was not pumping any fuel. So he brought the pump here for me to fix but then he was uh he had come across a, a 13 millimeter pump that he got and put on there so he was happy with that so anyway um and he donated this one to the cause i'd already done some work to it and instead of uh charging him we just said he would give me the pump so uh inside the pump there's a camshaft. Let me show you that. This cam is in there and it rotates and has these roller lifters that go up and down. They ride on the cam lobes like that and that's what pushes the plungers up and down. And, uh, so being a bigger pump, the uh, P pump is a lot more durable for pushing a lot more fuel. It'll stand up a lot more. And uh, since the price was right, um, I decided to go ahead and uh, fix this. Now, I ended up getting a a full set of 12 millimeter plungers, real cheap, but they were stock plungers from a guy on eBay that was selling them because he, what he does, he buys a stock pump, takes the plungers out and puts uh, the high performance plungers in and resells the pump. So, get a bunch of 12 millimeter plungers which are the same diameter as these performance pulling plungers and barrels, but since they come out of a stock engine, they do not have the cut that we need. Uh, well, they have too much of a cut. Let me let me explain. Let me get you down here where you can see. Okay, on these, fuel delivery is determined by how it rotates. Let me. Let me let me get a barrel and show you. This will be tough to show, but see the barrels have a hole in, goes all the way through, and when the plunger goes down, that opens up that hole and fuel goes in. And then when the plunger comes up, it goes past the hole, shuts that holes off, and pushes the fuel through the delivery valve, through the line, through the injector, and. Uh, how you have this the cut of this 
and where this is rotated, these rotate back and forth. As you can see, it goes up and down. There's a a short space here, and it's on like a ramp, and it gets longer as you go down. You turn it. The more it's turned this way, the longer that hole stays covered up, and the more fuel it pushes. And the manufacturers, I guess, I don't know why, nowadays, stock ones, they try all kinds of tricks to keep you from getting maximum fuel delivery. Was this? These are exactly the same diameter. One's a high performance, and one is just a stock one. The main difference is. The stock one has this notch cut. That notch being cut right there. See, this doesn't have that. The notch that goes straight across. That keeps you from being able to get maximum fuel delivery out of it because that they got that notch cut in a, such a way that if you try to turn your fuel up past a certain point, this will register with that hole in the uh, barrel and spill the fuel pressure out before this is able to push it through thus uh, decreasing your potential fuel delivery so what you got to do is when you're Bill Grimes and you got some 12 millimeter plungers and uh, you ain't spent hardly no money on and your objective as always is to try to get more horsepower without spending any money you see what the heck you can do about this uh, little problem. If that notch wasn't in there, we'd be able to get these to perform just like the uh, high performance in plungers. So what we gotta do is fill that notch up. So if you're very carefully, I've done this before with other things. Let me show you, uh, some of the others have like a notch in the top. We call it a retard notch. It has nothing to do with it retards your timing if you turn it up past a certain fuel delivery. So, but anyway, hold on. This is the ones, one of the A-pump ones I've fooled with, try to get maximum delivery out of the A-pump. They, these are 10 millimeter plungers, the biggest you can get for stock size. You can get bigger ones, but stock size. It had come from the factory with a, a retard notch in the top. I don't know if you can see, but I had welded up where the notch was you can kind of see where I welded up on that one edge where that retard notch was and in order to get this thing to deliver the fuel I wanted to get welded that up then took a lot of time machining and smoothing that down because the tolerances in these are very very close it's almost zero tolerance zero clearance between the plunger and the barrel wall and you got to get it really close but anyhow uh, I was able to do that and get them to pump some fuel but uh, why do I do this just to see if I can just to see if I can <laughs> so, and I can so <laughs> to me since I'm not going to spend a lot of money to, to me the ball game is see how much horsepower you can get without spending money and if I can modify cheap stock junk plungers by welding up or brazing up this notch here and get the same fuel delivery as the high performance ones what do you think Bill Grimes is going to do? He's going to get a set of these here stock ones <laughs> and go ahead and fill them up so the trick is think of the best way to fill them up if you try to weld welding on the top of those others wasn't too bad because there's just a little teeny notch there weld on the top of it that wasn't going to warp it very much and I could smooth it up pretty good but if I was to try to weld this it would distort it would pull it and bend it and we can't have that thing bent so I decided the best way to go is to braze that up with brazing just heat up the whole thing uniformly and braze it and I got one here that I did where's that rascal this is show and tell time So actually this one I did that too. I only needed one. I uh, could do and I, I plan to do a whole set sometime just to, just to build a pump with all of them done. Uh, you can kind of see you can see the braze in there where I braze that up. I braze that up 
and then uh, carefully filed it and sanded it with finer and finer sandpaper till I get down to 1500 grit and then get it to where it'll go back and forth back and forth back and forth in there real good and it'll it'll pump just as much fuel as them big high performance ones so that, I only didn't have to do the whole notch just at one edge so that when it's turned all the way up it will cover that hole keep that hole covered so it pushes the rest of the fuel a big slug of fuel up through there so like I say nobody normal does this kind of thing it's just the old dirt farmer he uh he likes to see what he can get away with doing how much horsepower he can make without spending any money and uh, I mean anybody can take a pump apart and put buy plungers and put in there but to, to modify your pump do your own modifications to the plungers and and barrels and to the I've even reground cams in them before on the lathe and I uh, probably won't do that to this one I don't need that yet but uh, if you can modify the delivery valves too and I'll, I'll show you some of this another time but I just thought you might find it interesting that this is the pump I'm going to build and put on the, the spirit of deer power uh, when I get it put together and get it on my test stand right over there we'll, uh, we'll show you how it does I'm going to have to make a couple smaller modifications I need to grind down the bottom of this barrel a little bit so this plunger can come up a little farther because it's just I don't know 30,000 shorter uh, the top of it is, is not as, as tall and it has to travel up that far so I'm going to have to shim up and make sure to, the plunger can go up as far as the other ones in there just, just got to do what I call massaging it in making everything right so anyway well, I'll go get them together and when I get them together we'll throw them on the uh, <laughs> throw them on the test stand and if everything goes according to plan soon after that we'll we'll put them on the on the tractor and see how it does alright catch you later I'm going to go back to doing some uh, Frankenstein work see ya <laughs> I know some of you fellas are going to say, Bill, that, when you heat that up and that cools it, that's, that's going to change the temper. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. But not too bad. I didn't get down here too hot. We'll see how long it lasts. And when it cools down, it's, it's going to be about two ten thousandths of an inch smaller diameter. And it ain't going to be a fitting close enough you got too much clear well a little bit a little bit but what I did was heat up the barrel a little bit too and it shrinks that down so and it fits in there pretty pretty good I'm not satisfied with that yep there you go it'll work like I say I'll keep you updated I'll keep you updated on it